If you're in the market for a tent that will work just about anywhere in Alaska, a Four Season Mountaineering tent is perfect for the job. Whether you find yourself in high alpine country, such as we are here, or in low timbered country, areas with high wind, areas with lots of rain or snow, a mountaineering tent is ideal for the job. We're going to go ahead and set up this tent for you, and we're going to point out some of the features you should be shopping for when you're looking for a tent for an Alaska expedition trip. got the tent body set up but we haven't put the rain fly on it yet I want to show you one of the functions of this tent how as far as how it handles a moisture problem out in the field one of the issues that you have with any tent is the uh, tendency to accumulate moisture inside when you go in you're going to be wearing sweaty clothes you're going to be breathing and generating moisture through respiration you're also going to be cooking possibly in your tent you've got to be able to get rid of that moisture in most cases the tent body itself doesn't have any problem at all allowing moisture to pass through where the problem is is the rain fly because it's waterproof what will happen is moisture will evaporate through the tent body but then it becomes trapped underneath the rain fly it can't penetrate through the rain fly so it gets trapped under the rain fly and it'll eventually either dry uh, or it'll run down the rain fly and drip off on the bottom just like rain does on the outside what you want to be able to do is facilitate that drying process and you can accomplish it in several ways. Uh, in this particular case what they've done is they've created sleeves for the poles which I really like by the way because when I'm putting my tent together all I have to do is slide the pole all the way through the sleeve to the other side and it's going to work out really well for me. I don't have to string it up or clip it in or do some strange thing to get it to this pole to get to the other side of the tent. So I can set this tent up a lot faster with pole sleeves. But you want to make sure if you're using a tent with pole sleeves that they're ventilated like this one is. Uh, there are some designs out there that just use tent body fabric. And what that does is that creates a dam so the air cannot flow between the tent body and the bottom of that rain fly. And it traps that air in there so then you end up with a moisture problem in those sections where the air can get trapped. For example on this tent here I've got a big triangular section right up here on the top and so that the air would get trapped in that area and it would not be able to wick that moisture off. So you want to be careful if you're using a pole sleeve system that the sleeves are made out of mesh fabric. Another way some companies uh, facilitate this issue is they'll use a clip system. So the tent body itself is actually clipped to the poles. Typically where there's an intersection like this, it'll clip onto that pole intersection or there at the top and so on. So your tent body is suspended on that clip system. It's personal preference, uh, but in, in my situation, I prefer the pole sleeve system because it supports the tent body fabric a lot more evenly so I don't get stress points. And it also gives me more room inside the tent because I don't have sags in between my clips. It's just personal preference, but this is the system that I like. Another thing I like about uh, a mountaineering tent is I like same length poles. Uh, certainly the t poles need to be aluminum and they need to be shock corded. You don't want fiberglass poles on a mountaineering tent. And the reason why is because if you're getting blasted with really heavy wind, that tent body needs to be able to flex. And fiberglass poles will allow it to flex like this when you get hit by heavy wind. I've been in this tent in 60 mile an hour winds and it didn't even ripple when it was tied out properly. But if you're using fiberglass, that fiberglass will splinter eventually and it can break and then your poles are lacerating your rain fly and you've got a real problem on your hands. So you want aluminum poles and you want them to be shock corded together. I recommend that you uh, get some extra bungee cord uh, that's the same size as your shock cord. Keep it in your tent repair kit so you've got that in case you break a shock cord or so on. Uh, and by the way, a little tip on your tent poles, when you break the tent down, you want to break the pole in the middle. Don't start at one end and work your way to the other because by the time you get to the other end, that bungee cord is going to be really tight and it can break. You start in the middle and then you fold it and break it again and, and again until you get to the end and that spreads the stress on that bungee cord through the whole length of the pole and the shock cord will last a lot longer. Speaking of repair items, you might want to pick up 
a uh, spare pole section and make sure that it's the same length as the existing pole sections on your tent and that way you've, you have the ability to repair uh, the tent if one of the ferrules were to split on you. Same length poles is really crucial because if I'm setting this tent up in the dark I don't want to be fishing around for that perfect pole that only fits in that one spot. So it's not a deal breaker necessarily uh, and in fact in this case um, it has four poles and two of them are one length and the other two are a little bit longer. So you do have to pay attention when you're setting it up. I have another tent by the same company though and all four poles are the same length. That tent's a little bit bigger. Um, so you want to look at same length poles if you can get it. That's really a, a great feature. Let's take a look at what this tent looks like with the rain fly on it. Alright, we've got our rain fly on the tent. I want to show you some of the other stuff. First of all, any good mountaineering tent should have multiple tie-down points. In this case, we've got tie-down points along the bottom of the rain fly. So you really need those. And by the way, we want a rain fly that comes down almost all the way to the ground. I don't want it clear to the ground necessarily because I want that breeze to be able to blow underneath that rain fly and help evaporate moisture from out from underneath the rain fly. The other place I want my tie downs is at the midpoint of the body. So here I've got one in the front, I've got another one on the other side of this door, I've got one at the midpoint right there, and I've got two more at the back where the other door is. <clears throat> and that brings me to another point. Double doors and double vestibules are really a handy feature to have. This tent has a vestibule and a door in the front. It has another one at the back. Well, technically there is no front and back because the vestibules are the same size in both ends. What that lets me do is when I enter the tent in the evening, I can come in on the downwind side. And if we're in snow conditions like this or windblown rain or something like that, I don't have to worry about that rain blowing inside the tent when I open the door, kind of inflating my tent and blowing all that moisture in with it. What I want to do is I want to enter and exit the tent on the downwind side if possible. So having a door at each end allows me to do that if the wind were to change in the middle of the night. The other thing is if I'm on a hunting trip and I spend some time calling or something like that, um, I can open up that door real quietly at both ends of the tent and I can look both directions before I get out of the tent and an animal is less likely to see me that way because of the movement. By the way, as far as supplemental items for your tent, you want to make sure you bring some extra tie down cord. In this case, I'm just using 550 cord or parachute cord. Uh, what we've also done is at the bottom of all of our tie down points we take a loop of bungee cord and we run it through that tie down point and we secure it to back to itself with a zip tie and what that does is that gives my uh, tie down points just enough give so it acts as a shock absorber and I'm less likely to rip these gussets out that are sewn into my rain fly so that's a really nice feature if your tent doesn't already have those go ahead and retrofit your tent with some bungee cord and also plenty of tie down cord uh, on a typical tent setup like this, 100 feet to 200 feet of uh, 550 cord or parachute cord is not too much to have. Uh, you want to go ahead and set those all up before you leave for the field so you're not out there in the field trying to set it up uh, in conditions where you might want to be doing something else. In this particular case, uh, the door opens from the top and from the bottom. I don't normally recommend opening your door from the top to get in and out of the tent because if you unzip it all the way down, and then you try to climb out, you're going to trip over this part of your rain fly. So not such a good deal. Uh, the reason why I like a door that zips from the top down is because in the morning, let's say if I'm hunting and I'm really going to be cautious about uh, any extra movements around my camp or whatever, um, what I can do is I can open this door flap real quietly in the morning and I can just take a peek out through here to see what's going on out around my camp. With the double doors, I can do the same thing at the other end. It also allows me a way to look outside and see what the weather's doing and so on without having to open up the entire door. The last thing I want to point out about this door system is a pretty unique thing, and you'll see this on some designs. Uh, the way this door is designed, I've got a zipper here and a zipper over here. So I have three options when I want to open this door. I can either open it from one side in this case, I've got this stake down right here, but I can stake down either one of these. So let's say the wind's blowing from over here and it's quartering that way. I can just unzip this and I can get in out of my tent right here. If it's coming straight on, 
or in under normal circumstances I should say I can just open it right in the middle just like that and I can go in that way or open up both zippers roll that up shove it out of the way and I can go right into my doorway there and of course the third option is I can leave the door down and I can come in through this side here the last thing about this particular design of a door is that the door material actually velcros inside underneath the rain fly but I'm gonna leave that hanging open at night and I've got a little storm hood over the top of that opening and what that does is that allows any kind of breezes to blow right through that opening over the top of my rain fly out through the opening at the other end and it keeps the inside of that rain fly nice and dry so I've got a really good ventilation system here if I've got really heavy wind and it's blowing rain on me and stuff like that then I'll go ahead and close this up and button it down I can open the downwind side though and I can still get good ventilation let's look inside all right, we're inside the tent now. Let's take a look at some of the features uh, that you want to look for. To begin with, any tent for use in Alaska really should have a bathtub floor. A bathtub floor is a floor made out of waterproof floor fabric that comes partway up the sidewall of the tent. So in this case, you can see my floor fabric is here and my sidewall is right here. And so my fabric comes about six or eight inches up from where the floor is. And the purpose of that is if I were to wake up in a rain puddle, if it rained all night and we had water accumulate under this tent, what's going to happen is, first of all, if I'm not using a waterproof fabric on the bottom of the tent, I'm going to have water come right through the floor of the tent. Second, if my seams are in the corners, like they are with almost all cheaper made tents, got a seam right here in the corner where my tent body fabric comes right down to the edge of the floor, what's going to happen is that seam is going to leak, water is going to come in through that seam. So you don't want that. You want floor fabric that comes part way up the side walls. It doesn't need to go way up to here or anything like that. You just need about six or eight inches or even four inches of floor fabric coming up that side wall to prevent that moisture from coming inside. That's item number one. Item number two to keep in mind when you're looking for bathtub floors. The floor fabric, or any tent fabric for that matter, comes in certain widths. And so it's unlikely that you're going to find a tent where the entire floor has no seams in it at all. If you can find a tent like that, great. But in most cases, especially if it's a two-person tent or a three or a four-person tent, the floor is going to be large enough that it's going to require at least one or two seams. So in this case, I've got a seam running right across here. But it's been seam taped and it's sealed. I've never had a leak in this tent. This tent right here is probably... 20 years old and I've never had a leak in this tent so I've got one seam right here and then I've got some seams that are in this area right here and right here and those are where my uh, tie down points are on the outside what they did is they sewed in another layer of floor fabric to create uh, to, to minimize the stress on the floor in that area so that's okay um, those seams are all taped and they're sealed properly if your seams are not taped then you want to make sure that you get some seam seal and you seal up all your seams when the tent is new. And then do that periodically every couple years or so just to make sure that you're on top of it. Another thing uh, I like in my tents is a pocket for my reading material, my glasses, my uh, flashlight or whatever. In this case I've got a pocket right here, I've got a pocket over in this corner, I've got one over here, and I've got another one over here on this wall. So if I'm sleeping in this tent with two people, uh, everybody's got a pocket where they can put their stuff. It's really a nice feature. Another thing I like, uh, this tent has uh, some little tie-down loops in the ceiling, and I can put a piece of uh, parachute cord around that, and I can use that to hang my dry socks or get my clothes up off the, the floor of the tent during the day. By the way, uh, when you're out doing your thing during the day it's going to get quite a bit warmer inside this tent um, than it is outside even so what you can do is you can hang up your wet clothes in here as long as they're not dripping wet you know get them dry first but uh, hang up your synthetic clothes in here and they'll be nice and dry in the in the evening when you come in uh, this tent also has a loop at the very peak, and most tents do. This one's got a loop at the peak. Uh, one handy thing about that loop, you can hang a flashlight there. So when you're rummaging around in the tent before you go to bed at night or what have you, you've got plenty of light in there without having to hold a light in your hand. Of course, if you're wearing a headlamp, it really doesn't matter. 
Um, but what I like with this loop from a safety standpoint is if I'm gone for the whole day and I know that there's a possibility I might be coming back to camp after dark, um, I don't have to worry about whether I can find my camp. ACR makes a really nice strobe light that's really good on batteries and you can hang that from this ceiling loop and when you turn that strobe on just before you leave camp for the day, uh, that thing will run all day long on a set of batteries. It'll run for a couple of days or more uh, depending on which model you get. What that does is that illuminates the entire body of the tent. So when I come back late at night, basically my entire tent is a giant strobe light. So I can see it way over there on the side of the mountain somewhere just flashing in the distance. And that really gives you the confidence you need to pinpoint exactly where your camp is. So it's a really nice feature. Uh, like we talked about uh, earlier with the door situation, I've got a door at both ends of the tent. So I'm, I've got a door over here and then behind me, I have another door right here. And again, what I like about these double doors, I can unzip that. And I've got mosquito netting in here, by the way. What I do on my door, if it hangs down like that, just tuck it up over the top like that. It works really well. So it's not hanging down in your face. <clears throat> if I wanted to look if I wanted to look outside this tent uh, in the morning, maybe I wanted to see if there was an animal in camp or something like that, then I can open up my door from the inside as well. I have a double zipper carriage right here so I can unzip it that way and I can unzip it that way. So I usually like to put my zipper carriages up at the top. So let's say it's early morning and I'm moose hunting and I want to see if I've called a moose in uh, the previous evening. A lot of times you'll do some calling and they'll come in, uh, wander around the perimeter of your camp all night long. So I'm going to unzip this real quietly. I'm going to unzip my rain fly. I'd want to have that Velcro undone beforehand. It's pretty noisy. I can unzip the top of my rain fly. Just a little bit. And now I've got a window and I can look right outside. It's really handy. When you turn in for the night, you want to make sure that you open your vents. As long as you can do it without creating a risk of rain getting inside the tent. In this particular case, my vent is right at the top of the door. I can release that Velcro. I've got a storm flap right over the top of that. So I'm going to zip my door up just about as far as I need to to prevent rain from blowing up inside the tent. And then I'm going to go ahead and close up my, my tent. And if it's uh, warm enough outside, I'll leave the rain or I'll leave the uh, the door unzipped just a little bit to create additional ventilation. And then if I open up the flap on the other end of the tent, what's going to happen is at night, the wind is going to blow and it'll wick that moisture right out from underneath that rain fly. So when I, while I'm breathing, if I've been cooking, if I've got wet gear in the tent, what have you, all that moisture that's accumulating inside my tent is going to evaporate through the walls of the tent and right off the underneath side of that rain fly and right outside into the outer atmosphere. It's a really great setup. This is Mike Strahan with OutdoorsDirectory.com and I want to thank you for watching our podcast on mountaineering tents.